it seems to me like you're constantly pre-evaluating your your approach to the instrument. At one point, I see you playing left-handedly, and then oh yeah, then you did I do that one with it? <laughs> No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Not that's okay. No. <laughs> yeah. And then you then you uh, introduce a second hi hat, and then you uh, you know do the trigger thing, and then it seems to me. Um, I mean, when I listen to the first record here, this one with uh, Gonzalo, that was actually the oh, first... Yeah. Avatar? Okay. Yeah, Avatar, yeah. It seems to me like you had a certain way to phrase the swing feel. I mean, to approach the swing more even than on different other recordings of uh, I have from you f with Gonzalo yeah. or, you know, it seems like... Uh, okay, now he's going in that direction. Now he's going in that direction, you know, because some people they find a thing Yeah, and they keep doing it and that's their thing. Yeah. You have your thing, but it seems to me you're you're constantly Questioning it in a good way, you know questioning it like okay, is this really my thing? Maybe this could be my thing too, you know Right, 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 right. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I gotta follow. I gotta follow my heart so I just, you know, I, I hear, you know, I, like I said, I hear a lot of different things and <laughs> I can't play half the shit I'm actually hearing. So <laughs> I gotta, you know, I just in order to get to all the things that I, that I, I want to get to sometimes I, it requires that I switch things up and, um, you know, to get to whatever I'm trying to get to at that moment. And then of course, you know, it's, it might be a time in my life or it might just be the sound of an ensemble that I feel like needs a certain thing or I don't know. Mm. Uh, it really depends, but um, but yeah, I have a lot of uh, I always got a lot of I always have a lot of ideas, and I'm you know, like I said, I'm always trying to um, channel them th in the most musical way that I can, you know. Yeah. Um. But you know, there's a purpose. There's a reason for everything that I'm doing. <laughs> there's definitely a reason for everything that I'm doing. You know. Yeah. Even the. Lefty Gilmore, as a video <laughs> likes to call it. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason. <laughs> There's a reason behind all of that. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me so, about it. Lefty Gilmore. You know. Oh, yeah. Well the, re well, the reason why I started doing that was because I just felt like, um, I don't know. It's just, things just kind of felt like, uh, it, something needed to change. Something needed, it's, it's, you know, you're on the road and you're playing night after night and then it kind of feels like, you know, what's going to happen. Everything is kind of like in the same, starts to feel like, a, not just repetitive, but like, um, I don't know what the right word is I'm looking for, but something just needed, I just, it just needed a shift. And I, and I definitely felt that in my own playing and I was like, wait, why am I playing the same thing, hmm. you know, two or three nights in a row or yeah. Not the same thing, but you know, more or less the same of course, type yeah. of stuff. And I'm like, I gotta switch it up. And so going lefty, um, you know, it made it so that I I couldn't really play exactly what that, or I can't even play the, the types of things that I normally would play. Yeah. Physically, it's just just limiting enough that I can't actually do that. But if I know the music and I'm being musical, something I'm gonna play something that. <laughs> That that might not be what I played before, but it's gonna be something that's also going to be musical, but it's going to be different. Yeah. Than what I was doing before. And um yeah, that always did the trick. I will always end up doing things that I, I wouldn't have thought of before before I switched. And then after maybe a few nights of doing it, I will switch back with um with the information that I got from going lefty. It's kinda yeah. like it's kind of like an outer body experience almost, but mm -hmm. it's not, you know, but the information, you know, if you can retain that information or the, the things that you discovered in that moment, and then now you can set up the way you normally would set up, but with like a, you know, a renewed sense of inspiration and more ideas and it kind of sparked some things. Yeah. So it was enough to keep me going for a while. That's cool. I love that you're doing that on stage because a lot of people try out new <laughs> stuff, you know, they, but they do it in the shed, you know, they do it at home. Right going to try how it is if i set up you know <laughs> yeah, but you yeah, you're doing it <laughs> you know when people are watching and that takes courage you know that takes courage yeah you know it's like either 
either I'm just like extremely courageous or maybe I'm just a fool. <laughs> but <laughs> maybe somewhere in between. I don't know. But, yeah, um, but the thing is, I definitely yeah. was doing it on 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 camera and, and not not just live, but also on camera sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> I think about that. I'm like, man, I definitely did a lefty on the on the uh, what's the tiny desk thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, yeah, I guess that's pretty bold. But I think by that point, I had done it like a couple of gigs before, so I was mm. like, okay, I was kind of like getting in the left hand zone, I mean the left left brain zone or whatever, yeah. you know. So it wasn't like the first time I had done it in a while, but still. I mean, but but also, I mean, if you don't do it where it's really happening and where things are real in a way, you know, things yeah, are always real exactly. when you play. But if you do it in front of an audience and with people involved, you know, you're not in your safe zone. You actually see what's happening and you what's see really, the difference. Exactly. That's the only way to really know what's going on is to yeah. do it in that environment. Yeah. Yeah. That's so it's kind of like, you know, I felt like if I didn't do it like that, then. What's the point? Almost, you know what I mean? Mm. Because because um I could practice these compositions at home left-handed, but then I'm kind of like, and I guess I could still, I could probably still get some kind of uh spark or whatever from that, and then go to the gig right-handed and be like, well, I did this at home. So, but then it kind of just feels more like I'm just playing shit that I. It feels less or it feels less uh not just organic, but it feels less. Um, it feels a little cheaper. You know what I mean? It sure, just feels yeah. like I'm, like I'm cheating a little bit. Like it's, like a I trick or something. Card trick. Yeah. yeah. I practiced yeah, yeah, this at yeah. home. This worked. Yeah. Now I'm gonna try yeah. it. You know. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Cause, because you know, also that's the thing. It's like what I'm playing on the gig is is not just me trying to, not just me trying to play over these forms. Left hand is like I'm interacting with the musicians. And, and reacting and, and going back and forth, you know, in in real time. So it's like, yeah, it's a completely different thing. It's almost a completely different thing. Yeah. Really. So. How about the difference in, in phrasing? Can you elaborate maybe on, you know, maybe even that specific recording, Avatar, you know, that's a special record. I really love that one. <clears throat> oh, thanks. Okay, so what do you ask? What's the question? I don't really know what the question is, but what I noticed on that recording is that you play, you know, uh, a lot of, not a lot of, but uh, way more even in this when it's when it comes to playing oh, swing yeah. than on different other recordings. Right. Um, yeah. I, mean, I don't know if that is question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's true. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Thanks, Pablo. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, I just felt right. It felt right in that um in that context. Yeah. It sounds great. I mean, maybe you could talk about more about what what is it, what it was like for you to play with Gonzalo and and learn his music, which is you know yeah. a whole other <clears throat> that, you know world. I agree. Playing with Gonzalo is a, is a um it's an incredible thing. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he's another guy that I, you know, I remember. Check, check this out. I remember watching him play as part of a double bill at the Blue Note. It was Gonzalo's trio and my grandfather's quartet, and they wow. played. This is like late '90s, probably right after I got my kids. So it must be like '97 or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think Julio was playing. Julio Beretta was playing with him, mm -hmm. and then my so I got to see my. Julio Grandpa's Julio Grandpa's. It was just crazy. Gonzalo, Dave Kukowski, Gonzalo, Dave. It was just a crazy. It was a crazy night, and I watched all four sets. Wow. And I was, you know, like eleven years old. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my mom for taking me to these gigs. Yeah, <laughs> great. Shout out to mom for for making sure I I saw these things. It was incredible, and I just remember thinking like, wow, this cat is so. I didn't really know much about Cuba or Afro Cuban culture or anything. But I just knew this this guy was not only phenomenal, but it was like he sounds he sounds like a drummer that plays piano. Absolutely. And sure enough, I found out that he you know he played drums first, and mm. you know, a lot of the piano players that I've been fortunate to work with have a, a very uh, rhythmic. Uh, they're like rhythmist for real, like yeah. actual like drummers at heart. Mm. <laughs> like Gonzalez definitely one of them chickens, and <clears throat> I would say even. Robert Glasper is for sure too. He's mm. definitely a drummer at heart. Like, 
<clears throat> now, I don't think I, I wouldn't say that Vijay is a drummer at heart, but we know that he loves rhythm. <laughs> we know he loves mm-hmm. rhythm, and um, it's it's the main. It seems like the most important aspect of his music is like it's really coming from the rhythm, right? Yeah. So David too. Uh, oh yeah, definitely David. Yeah. Mm. Um. So yeah, Gonzalo's definitely, <clears throat> you know, an incredible. I mean, phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal artist, phenomenal musician. Yeah. Uh, made an impression on me at a very young age, and um, when I finally got a chance to play with him, it was like a dream come true. And it's it's so crazy how these things happen too. Like, I never, I always hoped that I would I would have a chance to play with him at some point, but I never knew if it would happen, and if it did, I didn't know how it would happen. Hmm. But I have to say that the way these things happen, not just with him, but with all the people I've worked with, it's always been very organic. And um, Yeah, I I started playing with Gonzalo. I I just got a call. I was hanging with my girlfriend at the time. I think I was taking her back home, like on the train, and I got a text like, "Gonzalo needs you," and I was like, "Gonzalo needs for Matt." I was like, "Gonzalo needs me." (laughs) I was like, I didn't say why. I was just like, "Okay, well, what's up?" Like, Mm -hmm. I need to go. They're like, "Come to this rehearsal down here," and so I was kind of like, immediately put in a situation where I just kind of had to like, you know, show him what I. There was a little pressure. No, I got. I got to say, for for this particular situation, it, there was more pressure than any of the and than any of the other situations I've ever been involved in playing with somebody. Because usually that was just me sitting in with somebody, and they're like, "Oh, he sounds good. Let's call him for a gig," and that's that. But with this, it was like, I guess it was a drummer that that was supposed to do it, but it wasn't working out. So then they had to find somebody last minute, and um, you know, I guess Matt and Yosemite were kind of just gone through people and they, they finally agreed on on me they finally agreed on the same person <laughs> They're like, okay let's call marcus so i said okay cool so i came by but the vibe was already you could feel the tense the tenseness of the vibe that you know they had already been there for a long time and they were already kind of tired and kind of aggravated because the shit wasn't working out you know so <laughs> wow. and then i come in i'm like 19 i'm like okay and he gives me this music and it's like you know it's all handwritten and i'm like oh, okay so it's like he has a very it's very um personal yeah you know his, his penmanship and everything is it, it, like you can tell automatically that that's him so i'm you know reading this music and i'm trying to figure this stuff out but um i don't know if it was that day or the following day i remember i think gonzalo was probably like look i'm hearing good things about this guy but i don't know after the day we've had i don't know what's gonna happen so he called ignacio just in case wow i, I remember at, at a certain point reading music and ignacio was like behind me like and he's also another guy that i look up to you know yeah I, Ignacio was the first Cuban drummer I, I ever really checked out. So I just remember at a certain point reading this music, started reading this music and seeing like Ignacio behind me, like reading it as well. I'm like, damn, Ooh. man, I better, I better be on my shit. Or wow. Else I'm out. <laughs> it's a high pressure situation. Wow. It is. Also, to make it, to make it worse, I remember it was in the rehearsal studio. The guys in the next room were smoking a lot of weed. <laughs> and I remember the smoke. I was like right under the vent. Like I was right in front of the air conditioner and there was like a lot of it was a lot of weed smoke coming like you couldn't see it <laughs> but you could smell it and i think i felt it it was coming like right to the drums like sure. right where i was yep and i was like of course out of all the situations i'm sitting right here yeah i'm trying to start reading this hard music and i got like this flow this weed flowing like right right into where i am and i was like maybe it's helped like, well, whatever. <laughs> yeah maybe it, maybe it cooled me out maybe it just re- i don't know all i know is that you know it worked out and um I recorded an album with him like a month later. That's kind of crazy. One? So this was, yeah. Wow. This was like a few weeks before, several weeks before uh, before we recorded the album. We basically did like a three weeks of touring. And then I think a couple weeks after that, we went to the studio. Wow. Yeah, man. That's some hard <laughs> music on there as well, you know. Yeah. Wow. I, luckily, you know, luckily I, I had, um, thank God I, I had, um, you know, I'd, I'd already had the tools to navigate that kind of stuff just from like my experiences with Steve. Sure. And, um, and Vijay by that point. Um, I actually met Yosvani through Steve. I met a lot of people through Steve, Steve Coleman. So, um, yeah, luckily I, I had, you know, none of this stuff was too far into me. I had already checked out Gonzalez's music. I'd already known something about Yosvani's music and some of the structures that he would use to compose, mm. some, some ideas that were kind of familiar to me because of Steve. So, 
you know, it wasn't like a complete shot in the dark. It was like, okay, I'm familiar with this type of stuff. Yeah. Even though I've never done anything quite like this before. Yeah. And I've never played with a guy like there's nobody like Gonzalo. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, he's really in his own league. You know. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, I was, I was fortunate though. Can you describe what he brings out, out of you? You know, Gonzalo. Yeah. Um, man, you know, I can say for sure, especially in those early days playing with the quintet. Um, yeah, I learned a lot about myself just exploring, playing that music. You know, we didn't have that many compositions to play, maybe seven or eight. But um, so that meant that actually we had a lot of time to solo. Like there were like a lot of solos, <laughs> which is great to, just to work shit out, you know? Yeah. Everybody solo, not not just the horns, but the drums too. So I I remember, you know, I remember having those weeks at Yoshi's. The first the first time we played at Yoshi's was one thing, but we went back again the following year, and I, I remember just having that week and just exploring. But at this point, we've been playing this music for a year, so we were really stretching, and the solos, you know, the drum solo was like wide open, so I, was, I could just really just experiment with a lot of different things and just yeah work stuff out. So so um. It was actually really, really great for me. And also, it's really great to play with a piano player that's that strong rhythmically. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I loved it. I, I loved it. I was like, man, okay. I could um, I get used to this. <laughs> I can get yeah. used to this for sure. Sure. Yeah. There's this recording from um, uh, Klavier Festspiele Ruhe, you know, Klavier Fest uh, in Essen with uh, Matt and you. Oh. It's one of my oh, favorite really? bootlegs. It's incredible. You play uh, Lenny's Pennies. Oh, shoot. Uh, Joao, can you, Anthem. Can you send me that? I, I used to have sure. all that stuff. That was a tr that was the first trio tour that we did. Oh. And um, yeah, I, I think we'd play like Croatia and Germany, and I can't remember what the third place was. But um, but I yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed playing the trio with him too. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, can you send me that bootleg? I used sure. to have all these bootlegs. I don't know. I feel like they might still be on some of my old computers, but like, yeah, I, I used to have some. I used to have a lot of Gonzalo bootlegs in particular, stuff from the Vanguard and from Yoshi's, and uh, yeah, I just don't know where that stuff is anymore. So sure, I, I'll send you what I have. I have quite a lot of bootlegs with you. So <laughs> oh yeah, I yeah. mean, I mean, well, I'm talking about with Gonzalo, but yeah, anything else you got? You think I should? That you think I should hear? Maybe I don't know. I'll I'll check it out because I these days, especially now that you know we're not playing the way we used to. I, I find myself in reflection a lot more and, and just really, um, to be honest, just with a sense of gratitude because of uh, all the experiences that I've had, you know, I didn't take them for granted, mm. but I definitely appreciate them more now that, that nothing's happening. Totally. So. I'm wondering, you know, we, we already talked about you, you have your thing and you have, you have an unmistakable sound and an approach to the, to the instrument, to music. And, Uh, it's unmistakable because there's a lot of guys who are trying to copy it, you know. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of guys who are trying to do the things that you do and to, to follow you. Um, I'm wondering what that does to you and how what your view on that, you know, if you if you go out there and hear people and you pl uh, start noticing things, you know. Right. I guess it's flattering. I'm, I mean, you know, everybody, I, I, um, I definitely spend my time trying to play or just learning you know a lot of aspects of of drummers that I, that I really admired mm. uh, I never want to sound exactly like somebody but you know I don't know I mean it is what it is I, I don't know what to say yeah. it's interesting I know, sometimes you feel kind of funny about it but sometimes it's like it's flattering um, I mean I think it's cool as, as long as you know they're uh, on a path to discovering themselves right you know whatever you have to do to get there. Yeah. But for some people, I think they actually think it's, I don't think they realize that, you know, I think, I feel like people, I mean, this is the way I feel. I feel like people generally have, you know, uh, uniqueness about them Absolutely. that they can yeah. tap into and, and really acknowledge and, you know, um, cultivate. Um, But uh, I don't know. I think there's also a contingent of people, especially with the way things are going on, on social media and everything, that that just uh, 
that just want to be out there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They just want to be out there, at, and they and they want to be out there at any at any cost. If I if I could play something that I think people will like, then I'll just do it and get likes, and I'll yeah, you know, <laughs> then I'll be out here. I don't know what the ultimate goal is, it, but if it, if it's on the if it's really just about being on the path to like self discovery, then you know, do what you got to do to get there and I'm happy that somehow I could help you in some way discover yourself <clears throat> and then there's other stuff where you know it just seems like people just want to be famous I don't know what it is yeah. I don't really know where it's coming from sometimes I, I feel like that that's weird yeah Um. but you know it really you know ultimately I just do my thing you know what I'm saying I, I don't I try not to be too concerned with with what people are doing. That's that's a good thing, um, I guess. I'm yeah. asking because for some people it's hard to to notice that kind of thing because, you know, there's the there's the um, uh, there's the danger of being like, wow, I'm Marcus Gilmore, you know, I'm I'm realizing right. I'm that guy that people right, right. need to be, you know, people need me to be Marcus Gilmore, so, you know. I better, I better, I better live up to that, you know, and then you I kind step of, into this, yeah, 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 and you, you become one of them in that moment, you know, because you then start to copy yourself in a way, you know. So this right. is why I'm asking. I'm not noticing the, noticing that in you, but I'm, I'm asking for right. your view on it, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, I just, I try to limit my time on social media, and, and um, I just do what I got to do, and then you know, keep it moving. Really? Sure. <laughs> That's really all it is. <laughs> do what I gotta do. Keep it moving. Today I saw a video of you uh, um, studying and, and playing and working together with Zakio Hussein. Oh yeah? The Rolex thing? Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, man. Um, what was that experience like for you? To to work with him and learn from him and study that, that music? Yeah, that... Um... Yeah, it's, it's been a great experience. Um, you know, it, it basically just, it was almost as if, not actually, it wasn't even almost as if. It literally felt like, um, I don't know, the universe was saying, like, you got to hook up with this guy. Mm. Because um, I got a, well, Eric Harlan reached out to me and told me that, um, you know, Secure has this memorial for his father every year in February, and he likes to get, It's like a three-day music festival. He likes to get a drummer from the U.S. Um, every time. So um, he was like, I've done it a couple times. He's had like, you know, Vinny and Dennis Chambers, all these guys do it. Yeah. He was like, would you be down to do it? I'm like, yeah, of course. I'm like, thanks. You know? So he was like, yeah, uh, I can see putting the word. And then I got a call from Zakir. He was like, man, I'd love for you to come do this thing. I'm like, I'd be honored. Of course. I, of course, man. It's like a, so that'd be an absolute honor. So I was like, okay, cool. So, you know, it's in February. Da, da, da. Okay, cool. Meanwhile, I think a month before that, I had I had applied for that uh, fellowship with through Rolex. But I don't think he realized that I applied. <laughs> And I was like, I hope this is not going to be weird that he asked me to do a gig. But then I'm also like applying to, to work with him through this fellowship. And so... I think he figured it out like a few months later. He was like, hey, Marcus, you tricked me. I'm like, hey, hey. I'm kind of joking. He was like, Marcus, you tricked me. I'm like, hey, man, look, I just, I'm not going to say no if you ask me to come play with you. But I also auditioned for this thing. So anyway, it worked out. And so I ended up um, participating in this program uh, with him. So I got to spend a lot of time with him in the last couple of years. And uh, actually, it's kind of funny because the, the day that they announced the, the protégés and mentors for that cycle, They had a big event in Germany, and everybody was there except for us. But we were together in India, so it was kind of mm -hmm. cool. Like when everything started, we were already had planned to be, to be together. So it definitely felt cool. very natural and organic. The whole the whole thing. Yeah. And um. Yeah, I, over the last you know over the the next two years, I spent a lot of time with him. Um, and it was it was a great, it was incredible, it was an incredible experience for me. And now it wasn't like. <clears throat> I'm going to teach you all these Indian rhythms. You're going to mm. have to, you know, it wasn't like that at all. But of course, we definitely, you know, we definitely had some of that, a little bit of that, you know. Yeah. So he basically would have these workshops every year. I guess he didn't have one last year. Or maybe he did. Maybe it was just virtual. But typically he would um, uh, have these really large tabla workshops 
in the Bay Area, and he it'd be like a an intensive week where he's basically just um, you know, teaching like starting from like late afternoon to late night, um, wow. you know, talking about the history, and then you know, a lot of playing and then performances as well. So I got a chance to participate in that twice. <clears throat> And I was in this room with like 40 top left players and Zakir is just like, you know, dictating all these different things. And then we play him and then he changes it again and changes it and just keeps going. It was incredible. Just seeing how his mind works and how he puts these shapes together. Cause it's like the opposite to me. It's kind of like the opposite in some ways from somebody like another mentor of mine, Milford Graves. <clears throat> it's like, they're kind of like almost on polar of course, there are like certain things that are that are similar between them, but in the sense of like the way everything that Zakir plays is it's extremely calculated and metric, and Milford's whole thing is typically non-metric. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's pretty wild to just get that perspective. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, my my time with him was valued, and actually, I'm I'm planning on doing some, some recordings with him. We're actually supposed to we're supposed to do a tour in April, actually. <clears throat> He tours with this Masters of Percussion project, I guess, every uh, every year or every couple of years. And um, he's supposed to have, you know, a pretty long tour, I think, starting from like late March to most of April. But that's been cut. It's been cut back. But there's still there's still like a several gigs that are supposed to happen starting in early April, mm. and mostly just cyber gigs. But they're physically in the cities of these venues. Yeah. So it'd be like a tour. I don't even know what that's gonna be like. I hope it happens. I'm really hoping that we that we can get to it. Um, yeah, you guys sounded time, incredible so. together. I don't know. I I saw that Rolex video, but also a video of you guys playing together. With uh, I think yeah, there's there's a couple of performances of us playing. There's a couple of them from India. I think one yeah. in Punjab and one in Mumbai. Beautiful. How you guys were trading Thanks, also? Man. I mean, wow. And Thanks, man. Yeah, it's it's. Um, you know, I love drums. And, uh, <laughs> India is like. You know, India is like a drum crazy mm. culture. <laughs> they just they love dr they just love drums. They yeah. have different types of cultures in all the different regions. Mm. Obviously, the, the national instrument is tabla, and Zakir is literally like Mister Tabla. Yeah. <laughs> he's like you know, so wow. it, it's really it's also an honor to have to say that my few experiences in India have been with him. So it's like I feel like I've seen the best of what of right. what it had, the country has to offer you know right culturally it was like I, I was put right to the belly of all the dopest stuff <laughs> yeah that's, that's great uh, maybe uh, as a last topic um, of course you always get asked about your grandfather um, and I can't resist myself <laughs> to, to you know I don't want to not ask about him sure 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 you But, don't want to act like it like it doesn't exist like it's not a yeah. thing <laughs> like It's funny, sometimes people like to, uh, they know things are obvious, so they try to not talk about it. But I mean, but I hear you, you gotta, you gotta say something. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta say something, because it really is that significant. Um, he what, is that significant. What I, absolutely, what I am curious about is what you are curious about. You know, I want to I wanna hear the things that you've asked him. I actually really don't, I, I didn't ask him that many Uh, technical things like I said earlier like you know I just I just spend time with him and if something comes up then it comes up mm -hmm. I just let him talk more so I mean like you know I for sure I definitely asked him a few things but for the most part I just hang with him and we, <laughs> we just you know it wasn't like I was getting like okay Marcus you need to practice this and they need to practice this sure they need to practice this you know it was never that kind of relationship um, but of course, you know, I, I was definitely studying all the records and all the articles I can get my hands on, um, mm. all the interviews, you know, all that stuff. And then the rest was just really spending time with him and, and just watching him play. Mm. Really. That's, a. Uh, you know, I, I didn't learn like a lot of these, like a lot of these cats do on, on with these tutorials on, on YouTube and all this stuff now. Like I, I, uh. I didn't, I mean, I didn't really look for somebody to teach me things in that type of way, mm. you know? Like I said, I, I was just trying to figure things out, but I had, I had access to them. So really for me, it was just about being around them. You know? Of course. 
Yeah. And um, he's also my grandfather, so you know. <laughs> you hang out. He's my only grandfather because yeah, I mean, but because also, my other grandfather, my father's father, passed away when I was really young. So mm. growing up, I have, I have memories about this other grandfather, but but he was for for the the vast majority of my life, he was the only grandfather that I've actually had mm. around. So, but we always had a a strong bond. I was also his only grandson. I'm his only grandson. He has a lot wow. of granddaughters, but somehow I'm the only I'm the only son. So I see. Yeah. Did he sometimes give you uh, um, something to think about after he listened to you play? I mean, the other way around, you know. What do you mean? Oh, did, he, did I play and he say, "Oh, Marcus, you should try to work on this or something like that"? Like. Yeah, or even not 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 that specific, or you know, if. What's he like there if, was he, one if he listens <laughs> to a gig or a recording of you? There was one time I remember um, in, in the early days where I think I was playing a big band. <laughs> I was like 11. Hmm. And um, <clears throat> I remember we played a composition that had like a tight ending. So like it's kind of like a, a quick ending. Yeah. And I think I played it on a crash and then held it. <laughs> yep. And he told me, he was like, you know, Marcus, you don't have to, uh, this is like one, like the only times he actually said something. He was like, you know, Marcus, you don't have to, um, you don't have to play the crash and hold it. You, know, you can just hit the Hyatt symbol and then it, close it with your foot. And then you don't have to like worry about, you know, right. doing all these things with your hands. And I was like, oh yeah, okay, thanks. <laughs> 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 That's pretty much it. That's pretty good advice. <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. I mean, he leads by example, of of course, you know. Yeah. 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 And um, thanks to Win, actually, we we did perform together. Um. Twice, only only through Win, or oh, three times really, only through Win though. It was uh, the first two times was at the at the Rose Hall, which is well, it's been there for a while now, but this is when it first opened. It was the first performance they had. They had some performance for for. Uh, sponsors and, and patrons and all that and then they had one that was public i'm actually going to post a clip of it probably one of these days um and the theme for that one was families and jazz so they had like a lot mm -hmm. of people in the big band that had fathers or mothers that were musicians and then um you know they invited uh, my grandfather and myself to play and then we did another thing we went <clears throat> a few years later in 2008 or something for the Obama inauguration and uh, MLK Day, and um, but that one was actually that one was actually kind of weird because <laughs> Wayne was taking a horn solo in this one, and I, I think his horn like just kind of fell apart in the middle of the song. <laughs> it got it just ended up it ended up being just really weird. I remember, but um, but that first one, the one that I had the footage of of us playing, was was really special, and I'm I'm gonna post a clip of that I guess in the next few days or so. Cool, looking forward. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> what What is your favorite recording of him? Um, good Or question. I don't know. Favorite recordings, I don't, I don't have more. I have more. you know. Yeah, it doesn't have to be one. Know, there's too, there's too many. But okay, well, obviously, nice things, nice obs. That's one of them, right? Of mm. course. Um, I really love, I really love the bootlegs of him with Coltrane. Oh yeah. Of course, I love Daryl. I love Daryl Stockham and Live in Newport. I love all that stuff. Yeah. But there's a bootleg in particular. I think it's live at the sh showboat. Live at the showboat. Oh yeah. But McCoy is not really there, so yeah. And you can't really hear the bass. It sounds like mostly duo. Like mm -hmm. that's, I mean, some of my favorite stuff for sure. Yeah. Um. That's incredible. Yeah, it is. There was a practice yeah, tape flying around uh, last year. Oh yeah, of uh, yeah them playing like a sound check or something like that, yeah. or a rehearsal. So, with, with Dolphy, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's Steve incredible. sent that to me. Um, I actually heard that as a kid. I remember Ravi must have given it to my uncle Graham. I remember one night getting ready to hang out with my grandfather and Uncle Graham and most of the family, and Uncle Graham played the recording. And from that moment on, I never forgot about it. But I haven't heard it until a few months till last year. Yeah, and I said, "Oh yeah, this is the same recording I remember hearing when I was like." 12 or something i i, I never forget it. Mm -hmm. it thank god it finally surfaced and i was able to 
to hear. I don't know if I don't know if Graham still has that recording anywhere, but I I haven't heard it in years. When I heard it, it's exactly the way I remembered it. And then Dolphy yeah. comes in and then it kind of finishes, right? Like Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's really nice. It's that's how it is with some recordings, right? You hear it the first time it's a special thing for you. And yeah. you get back around after a couple of years or decades must sometimes. Yeah. And it feels the same. It it rings the same uh emotion yeah. in you uh, somehow. It does. It does. Yeah. Yep. Well, absolutely. Marcus, thank you so much for doing this with me. Yeah, man. Thanks uh thanks for getting me to do it. <laughs> you know. <laughs>